Hello everyone, it is Matt here from Scoop in Response, and today we're looking at a, another video for one of the commanders that was released with Dominari United. So you may have seen some of the shorts that we put out on this commander. It is Joda the Unifier. Um, this one took me a little while to get out. Um, I think the main idea around Joda is that it's really I guess a bit too easy to put together a, uh, a list in five colors where you've got a really obvious build around. So uh, whenever I have like a commander like that, that I'm trying to, you know, I want to add value for you guys, you know, I want to have there be a reason that you're watching this video rather than say, you know, anyone else's. I'm sure that there's going to be heaps of videos online for just general five color, I guess, tribal goodness, uh, you know, for legendary creatures. So. What we were doing with this one is we've sort of given ourselves a constraint and we've put ourselves into a pseudo Mardu, Mardu uh, tribal style deck. So we're not taking advantage of green and blue uh, really at all. There's a few things that kind of cheat the color pie because they're uh, hybrid and things like that. And we've got some uh, lands obviously to cast Joda, but for the most part, we're uh, basically in Mardu. So going over the commander, legendary creatures you control get plus X plus X, where X is the number of legendary creatures you control. So you wanna be playing lots of legendary creatures, but we're gonna be doing it in a way that is gonna be really aggressive. Um, so that will kind of make sense. It'll be a bit clearer once uh, you see the list. Then the second line of text, whenever you cast a legendary spell from your hand, Exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a legendary non-land card with less than mana value. You may cast this card without paying its mana cost, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So it's Legendary Cascade. So we're gonna be doing a whole bunch of shenanigans with legendary creatures. Let's jump into the deck and have a look. So first of all, we've got our creatures. So there's a few, I guess, um, more poopy creatures. So we've got uh, Rograk, we've got Rosnacht, we've got uh, Asmo. All of these are sort of a bit difficult to cast or, or they don't really do much on their own. But because they are legendary creatures, they're gonna be working with Joda really, really well to increase uh, the strength of all of our other, um, our, all of our other, uh, excuse me, uh, creatures. So, you know, this zero drop is actually turning into a Lord, realistically. And the other cool thing about it is because we have some actually pretty good one drop creatures, that means that they've actually got a couple of cascade targets with these two. Uh, and then I think there's the Mox Amber as well. Uh, that's the, yeah, another target for that. So we've got three targets for this when we're, when we're cascading into, from one drops into zero drops. So pretty useful with that. So the, the zero drops, obviously Asmo goes and gets the Underworld Cookbook as well. We'll have a look at that. There's not really that much in the way of synergy for Cookbook, but um, you know, it's a free card that pulls uh, a card out of your deck. Um, that's really what I like about this. Um, with this list, we're gonna be able to um, have a much lower land count because of the way our deck's working. We're always gonna be pulling out the bottom end of our of our deck, meaning we're gonna be increasing the number of lands that are gonna be uh, you know, in our deck compared to non-lands. So, you know, if, if you sort of like vomit out your hand and you get a whole bunch of like cheap creatures um, and you know, you, you sort of get Joda onto the battlefield and then and cast away once or twice, we're gonna be getting all of those dead draws out of the out of the deck and it's gonna be thinning and, and basically making our deck more and more streamlined, you know, as the game goes on. So we get through board wipe number one and then, you know, we lose all of our, you know, lowest end stuff rather than the big threats that we want and our deck gets more powerful and more powerful and cascades into stronger things as time progresses. So we've got the Hope of Girapur, Isamari Hound of Konda, Kytheon, Nora and the Wary, Ragavan, Reese the Redeemed. So this is one of those that, uh, you know, is kind of cheating on the color pie because it's a hybrid green-white, but because we're in white, we can do it. And thanks to Joda being in green, we can technically put this in our, in our deck. Uh, and this can let us, you know, create tokens. So it's a cool like engine late game as well if we happen to sort of still have it in the deck um, and we've got a whole bunch of matter, you know, we can still use, uh, you know, this to start making a whole bunch of token armies. I've got Yoshimaru, Zabaz, uh, Zergo, all of these are basically just gonna be, uh, you know, vanilla creatures. There's not a lot more than that. Um, Elias Ilkor, Sadistic Pilgrim. Um, it's kind of like a legendary blood artist. So whenever another creature enters the battlefield, we gain a life. 
whenever another creature we control dies, each opponent loses a life. So it's not, you know, exactly the same as the as the Blood Artist in that respect, in that it's more similar to a Soul Sister plus a Blood Artist effect. Um, yeah, but really cool, uh, you know, legendary creature. Um, and you know quite low to the ground adds a lot of utility with that uh, You know in that we're going to be getting uh, Like board wipe protection at least we're going to be doing a whole bunch of damage if uh, if someone board wipes You know if you've got this plus another three or four creatures, you know It's a five damage nuke to all of our to each of our opponents and that's the other key part It's each opponent loses Oops, it's probably loud each opponent loses uh, the, the life we've got generals enforcer Really sweet humans you control have indestructible and uh, sorry legendary humans you control have indestructible and then you can pay four to exile target card from graveyard and then makes tokens so it's a pretty cool effect um, it's a bit expensive but I think the stat line and the effect all on its own is is really really good so you know the fact that it has extra text is even better Goro Goro uh, you know it enables haste insane rate as well so it's only you know one red to give creatures haste until end of turn uh, and the coolest thing is it's just your creatures so you know if you activate it um, it's not going to say give all of your opponents mana dorks haste uh, you know in in your turn or anything like that. So yeah worth worth mentioning there. We've got Croxa um, You know really good card uh, And we don't really do a lot with our graveyards So you can kind of be safe in the fact that if there isn't any real graveyard hate in uh, You know our opponents pods we can really just have this one be our only real target for um, What we're going to be doing with cards in our in our graveyard, you know, we can exile it to pay the escape cost So I really like this kind of card uh, in a deck like this where it just it's not like leaning into it It's really just sort of like touching on the sides of giving you a resource out of something that we're not particularly using as a resource in this deck versus a graveyard deck that has a whole bunch of uh, you know synergy with the graveyard and as soon as you get nuked as soon as you get the graveyard nuked You know, it's sort of back to square one with it So I really like this in this kind of list Valky is another great card for having utility up front, but as well as that you can cast it uh, You know from the backside as well and the exciting thing about it is when we look at how um, Joda is worded and there isn't an errata as of the, the date that I've recorded this uh, whenever you cast a legendary spell from your hand, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a legendary non-land non card with less than mana value. You can cast that card without paying its mana cost. So that is the same as the Cascade situation before uh, they changed the way Cascade worked. But to this date, there isn't actually any uh, changes to uh, Joda, meaning that we can cascade into Valky and we can cast it on the other side. So very cool uh, with that. Up next we've got uh, Adelin, uh, Resplendent Cathar, just a really good uh, dude that attacks and creates more dudes. Uh, and these dudes are gonna, you know, get quite out of control uh, given the number of like low creatures you've got. It's quite aggressive, so really cool. Uh, Braids are is a nightmare, another great new one that's sort of come out uh, with Dominaria. Um, you know, it's a sacrifice effect. You know, we're gonna have like lots of crappy dudes that we can sacrifice and then that's our card advantage and also additional life loss. Uh, General Ferris Rockrick, uh, Rock, Rock, yeah, General Ferris Rockrick, we've got uh, that one there. It's, uh, you know, another way to create tokens and Hexproof from Monocolored, which is somewhat relevant. Um, we're making, you know, golems whenever we cast our multicolored spells and often that will be the case because we've got lots of multicolored cards in the deck General Kudro of the Dranath, uh, it's a lord and it does other stuff and you can destroy creatures that are big Ishin of two heavens and one Sorry, Ishin two heavens and one if a creature attacking causes a triggered ability of opponent you control the trigger That ability triggers an additional time. So all of your attack triggers uh, that uh, in the deck are gonna, you know, trigger twice so uh, you've got Adeline, you've got, uh, there's, there's probably heaps that uh, you've got Kroxa, what else have we got? Mm, th there's going to be lots in the deck, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you sort of look at all of those. Um, yeah, Judith, another great one. It's a, you know, a lord for, for power, so it increases the damage output, and it also uh, is a ping effect when non-token creatures die, so very cool. Another board wipe protector there. Uh, Campbell is a uh, another sort of turbo uh, drain type effect. So whenever your opponents cast uh, non land, uh, sorry, a non creature spell, they lose two life and you gain two. Lelia is another interesting one that works really well with Joda. So once you have Lelia on the battlefield, and uh, if you were to cascade or, or do your Joda cascade, basically every single card that you flip with Lelia will give it a plus one plus one counter. Now the way that 
the reason that that works is because of the fact that um, all of your cascades and your Jota type cascade effects have to check each card, which makes them discrete events. Um, it's 100% correct. I've, I've had lengthy discussions with judges uh, about this um, and the rules are, uh, yeah, it's clear. But if you play this on Moto, as of the last time I checked it, it doesn't work properly. But, um, you know, I can confirm that it's been looked at by the, um, you know, the the guys who sort of invigilate the rules and make sure that it's uh, like, yeah, it, it, it's supposed to work that way in the sense that if you cascade five cards down, you will get to put five plus one counters because each of those are individual effects because of the checks in between. Uh, Larissa the Dream Den, it's just to buy back our cheap creatures. Very cool effect, legendary in itself. Uh, we're gonna get more mileage out of our stuff. Phyrexian Dragon Engine, so this is a new one with Brothers War. Um, not legendary in itself, but it's part of the meld, which is Mishra. So, you know, it's not like we're trying to do this real crazy. We, we would love to be able to get this, but yeah, really cool if we can uh, to get the uh, Mishra lost to Phyrexia. Um, yeah, really, really sweet uh, card if that happens. But, you know, you still get all of the effects of both cards, which make it really good. So you discard your hand and draw three cards if you do. Um, so Tajik, another great one, uh, Haste Mentor, prevent all non-combat combat damage that would be dealt to other creatures you control. So when you have um, Tajik and General's Enforcer, they protect each other and all of your other creatures. So you can only do combat damage, so it just means that as long as you never attack with General's Enforcer, um, Tajik will protect General's Enforcer, Enforcer, and General's Enforcer will protect Tajik with Indestructible. So they have to um, exile both of these things if they, if they want to sort of unlock everything. Gothalia, Timna, uh, both of these are just great cards. You know, this is just getting you a little bit of card advantage. Uh, this one's going to just slow things down for your opponents. It plays into the aggressive plan a bit more. Uh, Hactos, Mishra, claimed by Gix. We went over that. Rick is a double lord for humans. Really, really good. Um, yeah, Hactos is another great sort of card that protects itself. It's really, really aggressive, so very cool. Um, I skipped over Ashen More Liege, as well as the Deathbringer Liege. Now, these are non-legendary, um, non so they're not going to be Cascade targets, but I just think that they are so powerful in this deck because of the double Lord, and also the additional abilities that they have in the sense that you can, uh, you know, they have uh, the player loses life or you know you can cast black spells and destroy tapped creatures so you can kill your opponent's stuff or even your own stuff if there's a reason to do that uh, i've got sarah paragon another great one um you know it's sort of similar role to lurus in that you're just buying back your stuff and being able to you know get more value from uh your creatures in the bin um, we've got Shannon's Sleeper's Scourge. Uh, so this just plays into everything with the deck. You know, you've got more legendary uh, things matter. So you play your lands and everything like that. You draw cards and um, lose life there. So really sweet. Snapdax. Um, this card's a bit of a sleeper. You're just using it to put double strike. Like, you know, the, the, the best thing would be that if you're, you know, mutating it onto, say, like a, a Rograk or something like that, and you're giving it uh, a double strike, uh, you know, three, five, so it'll be doing six, and it's just absolutely insane with First Strike Menace Trample. Um, so yeah, really, really well protected. And yeah, really sweet. Um, you know, it mutates, deals four damage to a creature, a planeswalker, and you gain four life. So very sick. And the other Tajik, uh, indestructible, and then battalion. So just more aggressive stuff. Winota, we all know what that card does. Just absolutely wicked, wicked card. Um, Adriana, melee, and uh, other creatures you control have melee. So whenever this creature attacks, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. For each opponent, you attack this combat. So uh, if you're attacking all three of your opponents, everything's going to get uh, plus three, plus three, and uh, yeah, be very, very fun. Lastly, for our uh, creatures, we have Scion of Draco. That card's just really, really sick. Um, we do have all five uh, for Domain, so you could potentially play this turn two if you have the Triome and the Shockland. And uh, yeah, just gives all of your uh, all of your stuff additional things. So, you know, Vigilance, Lifelink, and First Strike for the most part um, is going to be what you're doing for all of those creatures. Really, really sick. Um, for our non-creature non-lands, we've got... Uh, We'll start with the enchantment. So 
We've got Folk Hero. Um, so you'll notice that all of these are legendary except for the Leyline Binding. So we've got Folk Hero, Guild Artisan, Noble Heritage, Veteran Soldier, Haunted One, and Oath of Kaya. So we've got all the different backgrounds. They're all really, really good in this deck. Um, and then Oath of Kaya is great for protecting the few Planeswalkers that we do have, but it's also just like a sweet piece of removal uh, in a legendary uh, enchantment. So I really like it. Uh, you know, it's kind of like one of those fairer things and um, getting a bit of extra life in an aggressive deck is always good because impairing your life gain with the uh, you know, removal is really sweet uh, in an aggressive deck. So that's uh, the enchantments. Leyline Binding is, you know, sort of leads into the other pieces of removal, which is what our sorceries and instants are predominantly. Um, Prismatic Ending, Fatal Push, March of the Otherworldly Light, Path, Swords, all just the best uh, removal pieces uh, that you can get in the game. You know, if you wanted to like splash into green more, you could run things like a Rub Decay Assassin's Trophy as well. That's really good. Uh, I wouldn't uh, say that's not, uh, not amazing at all. Uh, Teferi's protection, bit of protection piece, um, you know, if in case we are sort of at the point where we want to um, close out the game and we just need another turn of attacking, this is the perfect card. Um, then we've got artifacts, so we've just got ramp, lotus petal, crypt, amber, soul ring, arcane signet, these are our just our ramp pieces. Not a lot of ramp in this because we're going to have stuff to do no matter what our... Um, what our curve looks like. There's always going to be, you know, three drops and two drops that we can get access to. So very sweet. Um, Shadow Spear is a sweet card. Cookbook is uh, really good from the fact that we can get it from the Asmo and then we can just discard cards to make food. And, uh, you know, you can sacrifice the cookbook as well to return a target creature from your graveyard to hand. So that's actually like quite relevant in some circumstances. Um, and then we've got a couple of legendaries. Uh, so the Throne of the God Pharaoh, uh, at end step, players lose life equal to the number of tap creatures we have. So it encourages us to be more aggressive. And then Sword of the Chosen, target legendary creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. I don't mind this card. I think it's kind of cute, uh, a bit funny. Um, it's legendary. It seems pretty fun. So, uh, you know, if, if you're not into this, uh, you know, you don't have to play it. And that's uh, more than fine. And rounding out the non-lands, we've got uh, Kaya, Obnixilis, Chandra, Diada, and Zariel. Um, I, I think the Kaya, Obnix, and Chandra are probably self-explanatory. The Arda is a bit of a new card. It's just absolutely insane with legendary creatures. Just look at what that uptick does. For four, it puts you to seven loyalty the turn it comes into. So for four mana, seven loyalty, and you're giving a target creature Vigilance, Lifeling, Indestructible till your next turn. So absolutely insane. Until your next turn is so, so, so relevant, and especially given that it's Vigilance, it attacks, it's indestructible, so worst case scenario, you're gaining life and it's going to be able to protect you and still be safe uh, on the backswing as well. So really good card. Uh, the other, um, excuse me, the other modes are just as relevant. Really, really cool. Zariel's a bit of a weird one. I like this card. I don't think it's getting played much in anything really. Um, it seems to be a bit of a sleeper, but it's a, you know, it's a power lord and gives haste. So, you know, in an aggressively slanted deck, being able to do that effect repeatedly each turn is, is really good. Then you've got the emblem of at the end of the first combat phase on your turn, untap target creature you control. And after that phase, there's an additional combat phase. So yeah you know, it's pretty easy to be able to, you know, just do this twice and then and go again. Um, obviously, people are going to want to kill that. But, uh, you know, if they're spending all of their resources on dealing with this, that realistically, it's it's a four drop, but it's not like this game ending threat that we're trying to like use to win the game. It's just going to win the game for us if we if we manage to get the ultimate off. So I really like cards like that in this kind of deck. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the non-lands. Then uh, I guess rounding everything out, we've got a very uh, honest mana base. Uh, we've got Arid Mesa, you know, all, all of the relevant shocks, uh, sorry, all of the relevant shocks and um, fetches. And then a few triomes, which is where our colors come from for blue and green. We've got the Zagoth and the Spiras, which are both of our, you know, off color triomes. And then we've got our Savai, which is the on color triome. Then we've got a few rainbow lands, you know, we've got City of Brass, Cavern of Souls, Mana Confluence, uh, Plaza of Heroes. Uh, all of those are going to be super useful for fixing for Joda, so love those cards. And then we've got the World Tree as well, which is when you have six or more lands, you can add one mana of any color with all of your lands. So this is like another fixer for perfectly, um, you know, it's probably one land too slow for, for Joda, but you know, if you, uh, you know, 
draw this card, it's going to 100% fix your um, ability to cast Yoda on, you know, if you have it in play and you get your sixth land. So really, really good there. The only other thing is probably the Azur Saga, um, which is really just to get um, a few of those pieces. You know, you get the Shadow Spear, you can get the Soul Ring, get the Amber, get the Mana Crypt. If you don't want to play this card, it's totally fine. doesn't really matter. Um, I would stick a different, you know, uh, card in the deck, like maybe a, a Volrath Stronghold would be good if you've got one, but they're quite expensive. But yeah, lots of different things with that. So that's pretty much the list. Um, it's a bit of a different take on on Joda. It's sort of not quite humans. It's not quite, um, you know, Mardu either. It's a little bit of splash, a little bit of flexibility. Um, but yeah, I just thought it would be a fun way to, to build a deck uh, and to sort of have a really powerful engine. But, you know, we're not just going to be playing the best cards in every color. Uh, we're kind of limiting ourselves there. But um, yeah, that's the deck tech. I really hope you enjoy this one. Uh, it's a really popular commander. And, and I think that, like, hopefully this is going to add a bit of value to people if they you know just want some different ideas you could pick any colors you want you could literally pick any three colors or any two colors even and just build a deck around that you could build a a, a mono white so to speak you know or a, or a blue white and you just pick your, your your favorite hate bears and you play a whole bunch of legendary hate bears or something like that and then you just have access to random bits of color that you want to play uh you know and, and how you sort of want to do that. So yeah, if you uh, if you like the deck, um, don't forget to eat your vegetables uh, and hit the sub button to stay up to date with uh, everything else that's on the channel. Um, expect more in the near future and that's it. Bye for now.